There's an FO ball. Na 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 na. Washington at Chicago. Stat of the game. Washington's run defense looks to be back. It was great last year. Stunk in weeks one and two. Over the last three games, they are allowing 2.75 yards per carry to running backs. And they have not faced cupcake running backs. They faced the Eagles, Cowboys, and Titans. And they're giving up 2.75 yards per carry to running backs. Does anybody care about that when ranking David Montgomery? I think you got to keep it in mind. And I think in a normal week when everybody's healthy and everybody's playing, Montgomery might be a sit. But he, he just came back off the injured list and had 16 touches and a really good fantasy game. He didn't have a great rushing average himself, but he did well in the passing game. He had a big, big 30-yard pass play. So how do, you, how do you tell somebody to sit David Montgomery unless they're absolutely loaded at running back? Uh, you'll start Ramondre ahead of him. That's easy. But I, 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 I don't know if I'm there yet with Walker. I love Walker, but I think I need to just really think about that a little bit more. Montgomery's role in the passing game gives him an edge that Walker just doesn't have. So I think I'd take Montgomery. I'd go Walker over Montgomery. Ooh, okay. Why? You have Montgomery ranked fairly high. Around 13. They're both 16. top 20. Yeah. Both, yeah, yeah, both yeah. top 18. Yeah. Yes. Uh, how about how about uh, Jeff Wilson at Atlanta or David Montgomery against Washington? It, it, good. Thank you. Well, thank you for allowing me to climb upon my soapbox. <laughs> Jeff Wilson is a top 12 running back. Jeff Wilson gets 18 to 20 touches a game on the 49ers who run the ball exceptionally well. He's going to run for a 90 yards per game. Jeff Wilson should not be a part of start sit conversations. Jeff Wilson should be started as long as he's healthy. He's already started in like 80% of leagues. It. He's he's ahead of Montgomery and Walker. Hey, last one. Miles Sanders against Dallas or any running back in that Philadelphia Dallas game or David Montgomery against Washington. I currently have Montgomery one spot higher. I have it Sanders, Montgomery, Zeke, Pollard right now. Okay. The uh, the Washington running back sit them all, right? Oh, yes. yeah. I don't really even care to roster them that much, but. We got to see how it plays oh, out. I'm, I will. I'm happy to roster Brian Robinson just to see what happens because I don't think they like Antonio Gibson much anymore. McKissick is a spot starter in PPR. Yeah, McKissick has scored uh, – 7.8 or more PPR fantasy points in all five games. Is that great? No, it's not a terrible floor, though, in full PPR. I think TJ Moore scored 7.8 or more PPR fantasy points in most of his games yes. this year. I don't sure. know. You can start <laughs> TJ Moore over JD McKissick. I don't know. Um, That's just his floor, but look, I mean. I, it, I think the McKissick one, for me at least, and this won't always prove correct, but the way I look at him is if they're playing a good offense, if they're going to get trounced, then I want JD McKissick in my flex spot as a possibility. They're playing the Bears. This game has an over-under of 38, and it's a pick -em. This is not the J.D. McKissick spot, I don't think. No, no. I, uh, by the way, this is a uh, really bad, really good matchup for running backs. They, you know, I won't even go through all the stats. I'll do it with next time when we have a more exciting running back. But if you get a lot of touches against Chicago, you come through with a big game. The problem is the touches. All right, the quarterbacks. Who do you like better at quarterback this week, Carson Wentz or Justin Fields? Carson Wentz. The the top 12 quarterback? The one who's actually throwing the ball more than 20 times a game? <laughs> more, more than 40 times a game, in fact. Uh, yeah, technically. All right, so we'll we'll call Fields a, an interesting stash as maybe things are getting a little better for him, but we'll call Carson Wentz an interesting start this week as you guys all have him right around 12. Uh, Heath, who would you start Carson Wentz over against Washington? They're, they're actually 16th against quarterbacks, but they're 26th in pressure rate, which is good news for Wentz. Yes, um, I would start him over your boy, Russell Wilson, his arch nemesis for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. I would start him over Matthew Stafford. <laughs> I mm -hmm. would start him over Trevor Lawrence, who we may have elevated a little bit too quickly. Mm -hmm. um, there's nobody, I mean, I would, there's nobody else of note who's playing this week that I would start him over. He's my second favorite streamer of the week. I, do, I would start Gino over him. Okay, Coach and, and Rogers still ahead of Lance. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So Wentz is a decent start. Um, let's get the running backs for Washington. Let's talk about wide receivers here. And I'm assuming no. I, don't, I mean, the, Washington does give up a lot of big plays, and Mooney has big, uh, big play in, in two straight games. But 
can't start darn number me right if if your roster is so bad that you have to put slot him into a starting spot this is a week where you don't quite have to thought you'd get the sound there right i don't want to um, kill it but i was um, but oh. it's because it could be one play and a touchdown he's uh, would you start J.D. McKissick or Darnell Moody if you were forced to? <laughs> I think I'd go Mooney. I would. Okay. Uh, how about the Washington? Much Lights? easier in non PPR. You like better McLaurin or Gibson this week, or McLaurin or Curtis? Oh, McLaurin. McLaurin or who? Curtis Samuel. 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 Why? Bears have actually been pretty good against perimeter receivers and deep receivers, but they've struggled against slot receivers. And that's what Samuel's doing. And his A dot has doubled over his last two weeks. Is it three? Now? Beautiful. What, six? Uh, no, it's like over seven yards downfield now. And it, part of it's because he caught a beautiful 32 yard pass last week that I, I just think shows that they're changing his role a little bit more. They're getting him involved. Wentz likes him, leads the team in targets and catches. I think he's ahead of McLaurin. It's interesting. McLaurin has 75 yards or a touchdown in four or five games. He had one terrible game against Dallas when Wentz threw for 170 yards. I think things look like they're trending in the wrong direction for Curtis Samuel. He does not have a carry. He does not have a carry in two straight games. His yards per catch is disgusting. Um, I really don't like the 75 yards or a touchdown in four or five games. No, that Why? tells you that he's a number three receiver. Just because, okay, so he happened to score a touchdown the one of the, the th- two of five weeks that he didn't reach 75 yards. Yeah, he had two for 58 and a touchdown in week one. All right, how about this? He scored 12 or more PPR fantasy points in four or five games. That's true, but I don't think he, <laughs> he's been over 15 points once. Once, yeah. Once. Yeah. Carson once. He's been right in the low end. He's been like a high-end number three receiver kind he's of He's a number three Even guy. last week, though, Curtis Samuel had two more targets than him. Mm-hmm. He's but, getting nine targets a game. But what are the yards per target? I mean, Curtis Samuel gets so few yards. He catches more balls, obviously, but but Terry McLaurin has uh, 45 more receiving yards on 13 fewer catches than Curtis Samuel. And that's, I think, right there. Because we are always, like in non-PPR, it's a much different discussion. But that's a nine-point swing in Curtis Samuel's favorite in PPR. Yeah. It's true. Plus, Curtis Samuel has an extra touchdown. But I, I well, I guess I just want I do want to point out that he had eight carries in his first three games, Curtis Samuel, and he has zero in his last two games. If you took away Curtis Samuel's rushing production, would he still have more PPR fantasy points yes. than Terry McLaurin this year? That's yes. what I thought. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. Uh, and as Dave points out, I mean, look at these perimeter receivers. Justin Jefferson destroyed them, obviously, but Debo had 14 yards. Ayuk had 40. Lazard had 13. Brandon Cooks had 22. Um, so that those guys struggled against the bears. So I, I asked you about them just compared to themselves, but compared to some other players, Curtis Samuel and Terry McLaurin, would you rather start, uh, hold on. Let me get a list of wide receivers here and get some good ones. Would you rather start, uh, Rondale Moore or those guys, both of them over more. How about mm-hmm. the inconsistent Amari Cooper Cooper over both Samuel Cooper McLaurin. Alan Lazard against the Jets. Samuel Liz- Samuel McLaurin Lazard. Samuel Lazard McLaurin. All right. Devin. Uh, I yeah, can't it should probably be that way. I won't know about Bateman by Thursday. Jalen Waddle. I'd start Samuel over Waddle, knowing uh, that two is not playing this week. It really comes down to Teddy or, or Skyler for me. If Teddy's playing, then I think it would be Samuel Waddle McLaurin. If it's Skyler Thompson, then it's both Washington receivers over Waddle for me. All right. And we're sitting the tight ends, right? You mean Cole Turner and Cole Komet? Yes. Yeah. If, if Logan Thomas was there, I think he'd probably be in my top 12, but he's not. Which DST do you like better? I, I feel gross starting either of them. I have the commanders ranked higher. Um, because every team has been good against Chicago. Mm-hmm. I have the Bears at 15 and the Commanders at 16. <laughs> okay. It really depends on your scoring system with Chicago, right? Like if low yardage and low points is rewarded, I don't know that they're going to turn it over a bunch. That's true, but 
in standard CBS scoring, which we use in a bunch of our leagues, and I think a lot of people don't bother tweaking their DST scoring, the Bears have allowed a DST to score at least 11 points against them in four or five games. Washington, it's three of the last four. So both teams give up a lot of turnovers, a lot of sacks. They both have bad offensive lines. But I, I think the commander's defensive front has a better chance to get more sacks and probably as many turnovers as the Bears do. 